Greetings, and welcome to the 2020 version of the SIC Indochina Academy. My name is Gary Bourne, and I have the privilege, the honor, of serving as president of the Court of Arbitration of the SIC, the Singapore International Arbitration Center. I also have the privilege of moderating some of the sessions in this year's version of the Academy and providing this opening address, even if only virtually, for this year's Academy. Our Academy this year is focused on means for ensuring the efficient and expeditious conduct of SIC arbitrations. This is one of the most important objectives for business users, to have their disputes, to have their disagreements resolved in a final and binding manner, in as quick and cheap a manner as possible. To that end, in this academy, we'll look in some detail at three specific types of cost-saving procedures. We'll consider emergency arbitration, number one, expedited procedures, number two, and early dismissal, number three. Throughout this academy, though, we'll have the benefit of representatives from the SIAC Registrar's Office, as well as experienced practitioners and seasoned litigators who've worked with all of these various procedural devices. We'll have the benefit of mock arbitration sessions where we see how these procedures are put to use in real life. It's worth pausing a moment at the outset and considering in a little more detail each one of the three main topics that we'll examine during the Academy. Let's look first at emergency arbitration. Historically, international arbitral tribunals in many jurisdictions were unable to grant any form of interim relief. That changed over the past 40 years or so, and most national law, the UNSA trial model law on international commercial arbitration and other national arbitration legislation today expressly recognizes the authority of arbitral tribunals to grant interim relief for provisional measures. Despite that recognition and despite institutional rules confirming the power of arbitral tribunals to grant provisional measures, preserving the status quo while an arbitration could consider the underlying substance of the party's dispute, there were many such situations where arbitral tribunals could not, as a practical matter, grant provisional measures, for the simple reason that, in many cases, if provisional measures were sought at the outset of the party's proceedings, the arbitral tribunal had not yet been constituted. As a consequence, first, under the AAA rules, the American Arbitration Association rules, and then other institutional rules, the Inst the mechanism of emergency arbitration was developed. That mechanism allows the arbitral institution, pursuant to its institutional arbitration rules, to appoint a so-called emergency arbitrator before the full or real arbitral tribunal has been constituted. That emergency arbitrator is empowered to grant provisional measures preserving the status quo until such time as the full arbitral tribunal is constituted and able to hear both the parties' underlying dispute, but also their requests for interim relief. The SIC rules include such a mechanism for emergency arbitrators and thus emergency arbitration. Under the SIC rules, simultaneous with the filing of a request for arbitration, a party can request the appointment of an emergency arbitrator. At SIC, we have a track record of meeting those requests for appointment of an emergency arbitrator rapidly, almost always, virtually always, in the space of 24 hours as our rules contemplate. Once in place, the emergency arbitrator is required to hear from the parties within three days and to make a decision within 10 days. A decision which the full arbitral tribunal, once it is in place, is fully empowered to reconsider, to either continue in place if emergency relief has been granted, alternatively to, to vacate or to annul. And finally, the full arbitral tribunal is also able to modify the interim relief that the emergency arbitrator has granted. 
We've had some 100, more than 100 requests for emergency arbitrators to be appointed and have appointed emergency arbitrators in almost all those cases and in a significant percentage of those cases, emergency relief provisional measures have in fact been granted. In many cases, this enables the parties to resolve their dispute by, by negotiated settlement. In other cases, it preserves the status quo so that the dispute can be fairly and finally resolved by arbitration, even if it takes some months thereafter. Parties have, in our consultations in rules revisions, been fully supportive of, enthusiastic about uh, the procedures for emergency arbitration. And you'll be able to see during this academy how emergency arbitration works in practice. The second main procedural device that I'd like to talk to you about in this opening, but also preface your studies of during this academy, is expedited procedures. As we all know, arbitrations come in multiple sizes and shapes. They're a little bit like people or snowflakes. Everyone is different. Some arbitrations are enormously complex and involve huge amounts in dispute. Those arbitrations, quite rightly, may take years to resolve. At SIC, we try to ensure that even those large, even the most complicated disputes are resolved quickly and efficiently. But smaller disputes, disputes of less than, say, five million U.S. dollars or so, which are not complicated, which are not either factually or legally complex, can often be, should often be, resolved more quickly. And as a consequence, we at SIC developed the procedural mechanism of expedited procedure. Under the SIC rules, as we will see, if a dispute involves less than six million Singaporean dollars, four and a half million U.S. dollars or so, or if it is one of exceptional urgency, or alternatively, if both parties mutually agree, the dispute can, through a decision of the SIC Court of Arbitration, be put into expedited procedure. It can only be done so at the request of one of the parties, and the SIC Court of Arbitration has discretion in deciding whether or not to grant a request for expedited procedure. But if it does grant a request, only in cases where those one of those three criteria are met, then the arbitral tribunal is constituted expeditiously, typically with only a sole arbitrator, and the sole arbitrator is required under the SIC rules as a general matter to make a final award within six months. The award can have summary reasons as compared to the more fully developed reasons that are required in a non-expedited procedure case. There's a fail-safe mechanism under the expedited procedure rules whereby if an arbitration is expedited, but subsequently it develops that there's actually a lot more in dispute, or alternatively that the dispute is much more complex than had been appreciated at the outset of the arbitration when it was expedited, then on request to the registrar's office, the arbitral tribunal can unexpedite the arbitration and return it to a normal time frame instead of the fast track procedures, the six month time frame that is applicable under expedited procedure rules. Finally, the third main topic that I'd like to discuss is early dismissal. This is a concept that was developed by the International Center for the Settlement of Investment Disputes, ICSID, under the Washington Convention, applicable in investor state arbitrations. The ICSID rules provide for the possibility of early dismissal of claims of arbitrations brought by investors against host states in cases where the claim by the foreign investor is manifestly without legal basis or manifestly outside the tribunal's jurisdiction. Under the ICSID rules, a request for early dismissal must, as the name suggests, be brought within 45 days of the filing of the request for arbitration and constitution of the arbitral tribunal. Under the SIC rules, we've modified the concept of early dismissal and Although parties are still free to request early dismissal of a claim on the basis that it lacks legal, any legal merit, or alternatively that it's manifestly outside the tribunal's jurisdiction, 
Claimants also have the possibility of requesting early dismissal of a defense on the basis that it is manifestly without legal basis or is outside the tribunal's jurisdiction. The arbitral tribunal has discretion to decide whether or not to accept a request for early dismissal. The tribunal can decide that it is not effective from a time or cost perspective to permit an application for early dismissal to go forward. But if the tribunal wishes, it can entertain such an application, and under the SIC rules, tribunals have done so in a number of cases, and in addition, dismissed at an early basis, on an early basis, both claims and defenses. Unlike the ICSID rules, the request for early dismissal of either a claim or a defense under the SIC rules can be brought at any time in the arbitration, any time when it would contribute to saving time and costs. Taking these three procedural devices together, they reflect the commitment that SIC has to ensuring that disputes under SIC rules can be resolved in a maximally efficient and expeditious manner. There are other aspects of the SIC rules that also contribute to the efficiency of SIC arbitrations. We have a mechanism for scrutiny of awards, but we ensure that the scrutiny process is conducted rapidly in less than two weeks or so. We also have mechanisms for consolidation, joinder, and intervention of parties. That allows multiple arbitrations to be brought together in a single proceeding saving the time and costs that multiple proceedings would inevitably impose. We also have mechanisms under our rules for ensuring that the arbitral tribunal conducts the arbitral proceeding quickly and we take into account the arbitral tribunal's conduct of the proceedings in deciding the appropriate compensation for, for arbitrators who have conducted an SIAC arbitration. You'll have the opportunity in the coming two days to explore both the legal basis for each one of these procedural mechanisms as well as the practical uses of them. I'm sure that you will learn much from the experienced practitioners, both counsel and arbitrators, who will be conducting the various sessions. I look forward to learning along with you. Thank you very much.